Hello again and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Al Grinov and today we're giving you another chance to decide whether the Russian women are really the most beautiful in the world. Our guest in the studio is Miss Universe, Natalia Klebera. In the history of the Miss Universe Beauty Contest, Russia has won the title twice, the last time being in 2005 when it went to Natalia Glebova, the daughter of school teacher and a sailor. Cinderella became Miss Universe. Natalia moved to Canada with her parents at the age of 12. She competed in many gymnastic tournaments throughout her childhood and teenage years. Prior to winning the title, Natalia was a motivational speaker, model and a fundraiser. In true Miss Universe tradition, she spent the early part of her year increasing awareness about HIV, AIDS, and the research needed to find a cure. She traveled to South Africa, where she took an HIV test in public, to set a good example. Natalia says one of her talents is the ability to read upside down. Her main goal in life is to have a positive and optimistic attitude. Hello, Natalia, and welcome to the show. Hello, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Uh, Natalia, so uh, since you can read upside down, you already know all my questions to that's you, yes? That's right, that's <laughs> right. I'm well prepared by now. Uh, Natalia, um, as far as I know, you, your last engagement yesterday was about midnight. Your first engagement today was about 7 o'clock in the morning. Hair and makeup at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yes, so, yes. so is, is, it, is, it, is it the same routine every day? Pretty much, although no day has ever been the same for me. Every day brings new challenges, new excitements, new opportunities. Uh, every day I'm doing something different, although, of course, most of the things that I do when I travel have something to do with HIV and AIDS awareness. It's tough. I mean, is it, is it, is it, is it hard work you're doing as Miss Universe? I think it's definitely challenging, and it's something that uh, does require a lot of uh, strength of character and uh, a lot of patience as well, but I'm having such a great time with it. Really? So, uh, let's say a few words about, you mentioned the, the, the AIDS campaign that you're engaged in. So, you're in Moscow as part of this anti-AIDS campaign, is it true? Absolutely. I was brought here to Russia um, by a several organizations, wonderful organizations that I've been working with. One of them is UNAIDS, the other is Transatlantic Partners Against AIDS and Global Health Council. And it brought me here to really get the awareness out to the public, especially to young people. And young women under 30, such as me, uh, to get them to understand the risks associated uh, with AIDS as well as uh, getting tested. Uh, are you going to show us your wonderful crown? Well, it's here on the table and you, yeah, they told me you're not going to wear it, you're just going <laughs> to show it. Is it sort of a ritual or what? Well, you know, it's um, it's a beautiful crown. I just don't think it goes with what I'm wearing today, but uh, it's more formal affairs. It's a copy, is it? This is a replica of the original crown that I was crowned in, uh, in Bangkok when I won the title. And this is, uh, in fact, the one that I get to keep after my uh, title is so over. So th this replica you keep, That's and the right. original crown, you, you're going to hand it over to the next Miss That's Universe right. in July, is That's it? That's right. And that's the one that uh, sort of she gets to keep for a year and is also worn for very special occasions. So, so you have both, actually, now? That's right. And is this the reason that, that you have so much arms security with you. <laughs> well, I hope not just that. <laughs> okay, uh, now, uh, do you think uh, that uh, after three months in July when you'll hand your crown to, to the next Miss Universe, like the best time in your life will be over? I don't look at it that way. I look at it as one chapter of my life ending and a new one beginning. I think that uh, the Miss Universe experience has been a wonderful experience. And um, although for one year I feel that it is time to move on after a year and I let somebody else get a chance, but definitely I feel that um, my life will begin in a new way and I look forward to new challenges and new opportunities. Well, you speak English with a 
slight, slight accent. And I just heard b b before the show when he talked that you speak Russian with a with a slight accent too. Uh, you're 24, is that right? 24. So exactly half of your life you spent in Russia, and right. another 12 years you spent in Canada. Do you consider yourself being Russian or Canadian or cosmopolitan? Definitely, like you said, cosmopolitan, probably a citizen of the world by now since I've traveled so much. But, you know, living in Canada, we have so many um, different nationalities and so many people coming from all over the world that uh, it's really a mosaic of cultures. And I consider myself a Russian Canadian, just like we have a lot of, uh, you know, Chinese Canadians and Indian Canadians. So I definitely consider Canada my home since I've lived there. Uh, for the past 12 years, but Russian roots will never be forgotten. Uh, do you think that the Russians have the right of saying we have uh, a Russian Miss Universe uh, mm -hmm. in 2006? I think uh, definitely, you know, I am of Russian background, so they can say that yes, I am Russian nationality. Sure. <laughs> How long haven't you been to Russia? It's been since we left. Uh, it's been 12 years. Uh, yes. So, so how is it? How is, is it different? It is different. I was very excited to even come back here and uh, to see all the changes. And it's been a little bit surreal for me to be back, sort of like a dream almost. Why? <laughs> Just because I've dreamt about this moment coming back. So you, want, you, well, you wanted to come back of course. one day to, 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 absolutely, to see you. Absolutely. Have you had a chance to visit your hometown? No, my hometown is by the Black Sea. It's uh, quite a, a ways to get there. And unfortunately, we only had four days to visit. And for a very important purpose, we wouldn't have time to go visit my child, but maybe next time. So you said it was unreal. You said that uh, lots have changed. Uh, what did change? Uh, what are the things that shocked you? You know, every time I come back to Moscow after, say, a uh, couple of months, some things shock me. Uh, was there something that, 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 that was a shock for you? I don't think anything was a shock. It was just... I mean, it's almost like I pictured it, you know, the beauty of Moscow, the beauty of Russian culture, it was how I remembered it, but uh, little changes such as uh, things becoming more modern, um, the fashions that people wear, uh, little things like that have changed. Is it, does it look strange to you, the fashions that people wear? Uh, a little different than what we're used to in Canada. What's different? I think it's a little bit more fashionable, you know, being uh, Russia part of you know, Europe and Europe being a very, um, like a fashion capital. <laughs> you, you, mean, like, you mean men or women? Uh, well, I, I notice women more because I look at their fashion. <laughs> so, so do you want to say that, that some people say that Russian women are overdressed sometimes? I suppose in Canada it might be considered overdressed because we dress fairly casual in our day-to-day -day life. But I think that is why most people consider Russian women to be so beautiful and so feminine, is because they dress in uh, such a fashionable way. Uh, 